something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms Restorations and Repairs, and tonight we'll be working on the Volvo. That is a 2001 cross country. However, this job is going to cover year models, uh, let's see here, 2001 to 2007, and that's turbo and non-turbo. The non-turbo is going to be a little easier. Not so much in uh, having to remove more parts, but just one or two more pieces. And the fact that the intercooler is there just kind of messes with stuff a little bit. But both jobs totally doable in the driveway. I am going to be using a lift for this, but mostly because I'm old because I have a lift and because I want to make sure that I show you everything you need to see in order to do this job. Now, here is our Volvo compressor for this type of car. And you can take the clutch off of these things with some special tools or a lot of prying and pull some shims out, put it back together again. That is called the clutch overheat problem where these clutches get so much of a gap that when the compressor warms up, it just cuts off. And so the, the system is totally fine. It just has too much of an air gap between her. You can pull shims out. Here's the thing. It's quite a bit of work to do that. There's also some cheats that I've done over the years for customers just to save them some money. But the cost of a compressor, this was a, a with free shipping from, from uh, eBay, was like 71 bucks with free shipping. Why am I going to bother to take one all the way apart, tear it down? remove the shims even if I don't have to pull it all the way out of the car it's still a pain in the butt to do that and in the end I still have a very used compressor that will probably give me problems down the road so for 70 bucks uh, I said yeah I'll do that this one's been remanufactured but it looks pretty good now this one also ships dry and I'm gonna go through all the steps as we go through this I do have Vita up uh, I have a copy of Vita here at the house not necessary for this I'll just walk you through it the very first step if you have the ability uh, you need to suck all the Freon out of the car. If you don't have the ability, this is where you break some environmental rules and vent all the air conditioning Freon out of the car. I'm not going to do that because that's illegal and it's just bad for the environment, so try not to do that stuff. However, if your system is already empty because of an issue, well, then you can skip to the next stop. For us that are going to be recovering it, I'll show you how to go about doing that right now. Okay, here we are on the passenger side. Here's your strut mount here on the passenger side to give you an idea. This is our coolant reservoir, this is our power steering reservoir, and we need to flop all this stuff out of the way for two reasons. The low side pressure hose lives right under here, and we're going to need to take off the drive belt. Both of those are a lot easier to get to with both these out of the way. The cooler reservoir on this one, she comes pre-broken, so I don't have to worry about it. That piece there is supposed to hold this tab for your power steering pump on. If yours still has a working tab, you're going to pry a little bit, pull this up, and there's enough room to set it up there. So nothing's gonna leak. We didn't have to drain anything, so that's nice. Next, we have our coolant reservoir, and we have this little over, overflow hose right here. You're just gonna wanna pull back on that and pop it off. Sometimes you'll have to cut the strap or un undo the um, hose clamp. This one had neither. This one just has a little zip ties, probably from there. And I'll take something and stuff it down in here, usually a bolt, just so I don't lose anything. Because the next thing we're going to be doing is flipping this up, kind of wiggling it off, and pulling it over. So I'm just going to stick this down in here so it doesn't leak. And then I can lift up on the whole assembly, which you can't see. You know, let's see if I get the camera even closer. Right there is our cooling sensor, so you do want to unplug that. You just press down get that pulled either off the rack or just unplug it all the way. Once that's unplugged and out of the way, we're just going to flip this up as well and kind of set it up here with the power steering pump. And that's just getting this stuff out of the way. I'm not going to lose any coolant. I haven't had to drain anything out. Now we have exposed our low side pressure fitting. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that. And it's going to take about 15 minutes, but I'm going to recover the Freon out of this, the R134 that this unit uses. And then I'm going to pull a slight vacuum on it. So while it is currently sucking out all the Freon and then I'm going to be pulling a vacuum, the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to draw a picture because the Volvo, they don't leave you the diagram that a lot of car manufacturers leave you. So you have to figure out how your drive belt goes on there. So I've made that. I'll set that aside. Next thing I want to do 
is I might as well go ahead and start taking apart the stuff here. I need to get this fan out and I need to get the lower turbo hose out of here. So the first thing I want to do there is I'm going to take my dipstick out. The reason I'm taking it out, these get brittle with age. That right there will crack, snap off, and that won't be any good. So we'll get rid of that. And I am going to get a T25. And we'll go ahead and remove this bolt right here. Once I have that one out, I'll do the same with the one right here. That's lower, that's uh, loosening up so you can move this around a little bit, this upper turbo hose. You'll need some, you'll need to be able to move stuff around a little bit. You don't have to remove a lot of this, you just have to be able to push it out of the way. All right, got both those out. Okay, I've got to relieve, remove this turbo hose. Actually, what I usually do is just take the upper hose off, pull this up, push it out of the way, and take that hose and kind of stuff it off to the side. A lot of times that way I don't have to take the hose completely out. But I do have to loosen up the hose clamp, so that's what I'm going to do now. Once I've got that loose, I need to just kind of pull up on it. There we go. And I'm going to tuck this hose up a little bit, giving me more room down here. I'm going to take the hose clamp off of the turbo hose, right, like that, and I'll set that aside. And that way I've got this turbo hose, and if I kind of pull on it and push it around, I can get it usually enough out of the way so that there is my compressor. I have access to everything I need right there. And when we take it out, we're going to take this fan out. That is going to open up a lot of room. We're going to slide that compressor out all the way over to about here and get it up out of there. Okay, so there's a couple things we need to do before we take the uh, fan shroud out. We've got a plug over here. You need to squeeze and unplug. All right, that separates that. Some of these um, wires that you see here, they actually kind of go into a channel along that side. So when you're pulling up on this whole mess, Make sure that you don't accidentally tug on the wrong thing here. The Bain cabling right here, I'm gonna plug that as well. Then over on the driver's side, we have some more hoses here and we have this. This is our purge control solenoid. So I'm just gonna kind of pull all that out of the way and uh, be careful to not do what I just did, which is accidentally unplug the main vent line going to the car or to the gas tank uh, canister setup because you'll end up setting a code here. All right, once all that's unplugged, you only have two bolts. There are 10 mil here and one on the other side. And there's a hose, our expansion tank hose. It just runs along the top, so you just kind of pull up on that. See it there? Cool. All right, so I'm going to take the two tens out, and we'll wiggle this thing up and out. Okay, with those two bolts out, you can see the whole fan shroud starts to move around. Just want to make sure that you don't accidentally grab onto stuff you don't want to grab onto. And you're going to slowly pull up on it, and you'll see that some of the stuff just has to be kind of fed around it so we don't accidentally tear or damage something we're not supposed to here. There we go. Seems like a uh, a cluster, but honestly it's not. It's just you've got these tabs that it sits in down here towards the bottom. There's one there and there's one there. And so they kind of get caught on the power steering or the uh, transmission cooler lines. On the front, this side's pretty clean, but this side over here, you have to watch out for the driver's side. There's wire that gets routed down through here and it wants to hang and tug on that. So you have to kind of get it free with one hand. Not really something I could film for you, but something you need to be aware of as you go about.
All right, here we are. This down here, it's hard to see it, but that's it. That is our air conditioning compressor. And it is held on by four bolts, two on the top that also go through the alternator, and two on the bottom that just bolt the compressor to the block. We have our two lines, our low pressure and our high pressure line. Those are right there. When you take these off, you will want to replace the O-rings before going back together. And then this model, the original had an overheat sensor back here. Our replacement doesn't have that, so I'm just going to be unplugging it right there. That that goes into this harness here where our battery hot cable is, that would just set aside because that is all that really holds this thing together. Cool. Well, the system is still evacuating, and uh, I'm going to pull a vacuum on it so I don't get a face full of oil dye. So while that is continuing, it's time we can take off the belt. All right, because of the angle of my equipment, it's a little hard to see down in here, especially with this uh, still hooked up here. But you're going to need a special tool here, or you're going to need some hand strength. You're going to need a 14 combination wrench. Uh, I use the box side if I don't have a tool like this. This is a gear wrench, drive belt tool set. Pretty cool little piece of equipment. It ratchets and you can change the angle on it from here or wherever so you can get down in weird spots like this but and it is a 14 mil and you're going to be pulling this way to remove tension now you don't have to take the belt all the way out as I get there. so here's our drive belt there's our crankshaft down there that is what we're on right now is our tensioner up on top here's our power steering below it is the alternator and way down at the bottom is our air conditioning compressor we're, we've got the 14 on that bolt that sticks out from the tensioner and I'm just going to pull on that and that releases tension. And for this job, I'm just going to leave the tool hooked up. Now once I have the tension completely off of this, all I'm going to do is kind of wiggle it a little bit to get it off of the compressor itself. Easier with two hands, so I'll put the camera down for a second. But you can see down in there, I'm just going to slide it off that bottom piece and, uh, and then we're ready to start taking the compressor off the car. All right, so once we have got ourselves with a little vacuum, I'm not going all the way to 30. I just don't want it to spray at me and have any oil come out of there when I open it up. So I've taken it down to about 15 pounds of pressure, negative pressure that is, and we are ready to take the compressor hoses off. Let's do it. So here is our compressor. We've got all the gas sucked out. We've got a light vacuum pulled on it. Time to pull off these two 12 millimeters here, one on each side. And there's going to be some O-rings. Hang on to those O-rings. We're going to replace them, but you want to remember what size they are. So we'll just go ahead and pop that loose. Set those bolts aside for sure. Right, once they're both out, just grab a hold of the hoses, pull them off, and that's it. You got an O-ring on the compressor and another O-ring on the hose. We'll do the same thing on that side. Hopefully, yeah, you can see. There's one O-ring on the hose. <clears throat> and if you see down in there, there's another O-ring there and there. Cool. Well, we are down to the last four bolts that are holding this thing in place. And they are right there. Can you see that one? Yeah, not without my arm in the way. There, right there is one. There's one on the bottom, one more the farther forward. <clears throat> Again, this turbo hose that I have here is kind of blocking the view of some of this. But with a little bit of convincing, you can push that even farther out of the way so you can get to everything. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove those four bolts. And this project will be halfway done. Those are also 12s, by the way. Trying to get a better angle of some of this stuff, but truthfully, there's not a whole lot you can do. There's one on the bottom. And there's another one on the bottom. Sorry for the angle on this, there's really no way to get in here and see this, but now that all four bolts are loose, we're just going to take the whole compressor, we're going to make sure that all the wiring is out of the way, and we're going to start moving it backwards. Being careful not to catch any of the wires, 
or to damage the compressor or the radiator, we pull it out. There it is. And uh, now what we're going to do is lay this thing down on the ground. If I can get the camera on that. We'll lay this down on the ground. We're going to compare it to the new one to make sure that we have the right part because there are some depth differences in some of these models. And it sucks to put it all the way back together and shred your drive belt could actually lead to a broken timing belt very quickly. So let's do that. All right, so at first glance, these two do not look the same. But, and this is a big but, they do actually, they are actually compatible. The, the measurement, you don't care about the overall length of the compressor. This is clearly a different manufacturer. But I do want to make sure that my, my bolt holes would line up. And not only will they line up, but will they also line up with this being in the exact right position? And the case here is, yes, we'll be able to reuse this. And so it is, it is time to reinstall. Other differences on this, the ports are in slightly different places. They will still bolt in just fine. They're the same size holes. And then you don't have the overheat sensor on the new model. You can see it actually had a spot and it's been blocked off. All right, here we go. So on the back here, you can see I've started all four of the long bolts. You do want to do that. Don't tighten any of them until all four of them are tightened. I'm going to tighten those up. Then this, which is the compressor wire that was hooked to the overheat sensor, that's just going to get plugged in right there. And then lastly, I've replaced these two O-rings that did not come, the unit I bought did not come with O-rings, or they came with used ones anyway. Uh, so I put two new O-rings there. When I am ready to go ahead and reattach the two hoses, I will replace those as well. You definitely want to do it. I've, I've had, I've replaced compressors on these before and try to, you know, reuse the inner seals and that doesn't work out usually. <laughs> You'll end up with a leak and that's a lot of time to get back down in there and fix that. So it's best to just do it right the first time. Let's proceed with tightening those four bolts. Okay, I'm going to try to get the camera down in here, which is not as easy as it sounds. Here we go. So there, right there in a better spot. There we go. That is definitely about as good as it's going to get. You can kind of see I've plugged back in my sensor. I've got all four bolts tightened down. I've got two new green O-rings. And uh, it's time to replace those yellow O-rings right there. We'll replace those two, put those back in, and I can hook up my machinery and begin evacuating the system. It is important when you do work like this that you put a vacuum on it. If you don't, you could trap moisture in the system and that can cause problems down the road. All right, so if you've made it this far, you're halfway home, right? Actually, you're done with the hard part. It's time for the easy part, just putting it all back together. We've got our four bolts back into the compressor. We got our two compressor air lines going in with two new O-rings apiece, four new O-rings, and we plugged in our magnetic compressor clutch power source and so we are really really down to reinstalling the fan shroud and hooking all those wires back up putting our belt back on and then recharging the system and testing to make sure it works hopefully it does right so i'm going to uh, go ahead and because i'm going to be evacuating the system now is the time to start doing that that way you're overlapping time right i'm going to be sucking that thing down while i am busy putting the fan shroud and all the rest all right while we're waiting for the system to evacuate and uh, pull a vacuum down. We're just gonna move all our wiring and our hoses and everything as far back away as we can. Tuck this out of the way if I can again. And just kind of pushing that back. And we're ready to put our radiator fan shroud back in. Once you got it down in there, you got to kind of put everything back into its little nook. You don't want to pinch the uh, expansion tube for the radiator. And we certainly don't want to uh, pinch any wiring. Hey, that side looks good. Let me get a flashlight. 
look down on this side, make sure that our hoses, our wiring in here didn't get pinched. And I'm going to reattach that to the holders here. You really can't see this, but that's it right there. All right, and then it's time to plug everything back in. Got that small purple line right there. Okay, and that hooks. Oh, the tab is broken for this one, so we'll just set it in there. Then the larger line here comes across the top. It lives there. And our big fan plug is right here. That gets reattached right like that. Then on this side we have our purge valve, but the hose came off the bottom, so make sure to reattach that. And that goes back in. Slides into place. And now we just have our two 10 millimeter bolts to put back in. We're ready to reattach our turbo hose. All right, once we got that done, I mean, we are making short work of this. I told you going back together is a whole lot easier. Once we put our turbo hose back in the general right area, we can reattach that last little piece of wiring so that it doesn't get caught up in anything. And then we've got our hose clamp that we took off before so we could kind of bend stuff around. We're going to go ahead and put that back on the soft rubber part. By the way, while we're doing this, take a look deep down inside of that hose. Once that's all ways in place. And then we're going to tighten that hose clamp down. The uh, car will usually run great with this clamp loose. I'll tell you, a romp on it once, and uh, when that happens, you got problems because it'll just pop the line back off while you're out driving. You'll have no boost at all. But right, I've got everything lined up. I started both these by hand, these T25 Torx. Just going to tighten that up. And then tighten this one. And that's it. So this is back in place. The tube is tightened down. The hose clamp's tightened down. All my wiring is where it should be. Everything else is back. The um, EVAP canister line is back on there that popped off. The last step before we move on to um, move on to the drive belt is to insert our oil dipstick. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and check it. Oh, it's half quart low and it's uh, it's dirty. So this car is actually going to be due for an oil change in 500. I might go ahead and take care of it today while I've got it in the shop, but I, I probably will go to 500 and I'll just top it off. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and move over to the drive belt. It'll be time to put some Freon in this thing and button. All right, it's time to put my belt back on. I've got my cheat sheet here. We want the bottom here to go over the compressor. And we're doing that. And then it has to come around. The alternator pulley, and then up. And after a whole lot of struggle, it's in. All right, so we have our belt on. We have our system sucked down into a vacuum. We have our compressor and our fan and everything else in place. All we'll have left to do after we refill this thing is to put our power steering bottle, reservoir, and our uh, cooling expansion tank back into place, which won't take but a second, but uh, what I've done is gone online, and it takes 2.19 pounds. I'll put in 2.2. That accounts for some loss in the lines, because not all of it will enter the system, and I'm going to do that right now. Let's see if it works. All right, we're ready to reinstall all our stuff. I will wait to take off the uh, fill valve here until after that I've started the car and run it for a minute or two to make sure that everything equalized. But I can go ahead and put this on. And that's our low coolant warning light. We can take our little bolt that we've kept everything from leaking. Stick that back in there. If you've lost any coolant, you can redo it. You top it off right now, but mine's clearly between the min and the max, so I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and move my cabling over just a little bit so I don't catch anything. I'll put that back down in here and reattach that right there. And guess what? It's time to start this thing and see if it works. Let's do it.
That's it, it's working. And that is beautiful, 32 degrees. It is still dropping, I'm just, that's good enough for me. I'm looking for about a 30 degree drop, so let's wrap this up. All right, well, there it is, it's done. And it wasn't that big of a deal. In fact, I never needed to raise the car up. I never needed to remove a tire. This was literally top down work. And it wasn't that difficult. On a scale of one to 10, I would say this is a three or maybe a four if you're really a novice. Tool wise, a 10 millimeter, a T25, and a 12 millimeter was all it took to get this apart and put back together again. A couple of O-rings, and if you don't have the machinery to evac and recharge your house, you could get by with just venting this as you drained it and then refilling it with one of those cans you can buy at Walmart or at a parts store. Not a hard job at all. And it's nice to have your air conditioning working again. This, we're going into fall here, but that's okay because I still like to have it for defrosting the windshield. And next summer it'll be ready for me. So that'll do it for today. I hope you will like and subscribe because there will be a lot more how-to videos, in-depth videos like this one here. And uh, well, I hope you'll stick around for them. Take care.